Good morning. So let's get started. Um, so we're going to be going back today a little bit and talking about the estates assignment because I've started uh, marking the assignment and well, it's not going well, guys. It's it's not going well. Um, so I've graded about. 20% of the class as of right now. Um, and I've already identified, um, yeah, 12 things that I, uh, that are troubling, um, sort of as patterns, right? Not you know, 12 things that specifically happened. Um, and so what I wanna do today is I'm going to walk you through these 12 things. And then we're gonna talk about what's next and we're probably gonna wrap up mm, in 20 to 30 minutes. And then we'll let you guys go a little early, okay? So these are the 12 things that we need to talk about. They are not presented in any sort of particular order. They are just as I sort of discovered them, I threw them into some notes and, um, and now we're gonna go through them. Um, once I finish grading this week, uh, I will upload the um, common errors and um, yeah, then you can, can take a, a deeper look. Um, but let's talk about them first. So the first thing that came to my, that I noticed that was a problem in lots of, of students' answers is that a lot of you guys want to create the fee tail out of conveyances that don't do that at all, okay? So I'm just gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about how you can discern that a fee tail has been created in a little later, but just as, a, as an absolute, like, statement, I can tell you, there is no fee tail in the assignment that you guys did, okay? Um, so, uh, one second. Hi, Kira. We are discussing the estates assignment that you guys submitted um, uh, over the last couple of weeks. And um, we're discussing common errors because there are a lot of them. There's a lot of problems with this assignment. So we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about that in more, uh, we're gonna be talking about that in detail. So that's the first thing, no fee tail anywhere. The second thing is just because somebody has children 
doesn't make that person, doesn't make those children their heirs. And conversely, just because somebody doesn't have children doesn't mean that they don't have heirs, okay? We've discussed this on numerous occasions. Heirs don't exist until you die. And just, and, and who those heirs are going to be doesn't, isn't known until you die, okay? So we can sort of presume that your children are likely to be your heirs, but they're not necessarily, okay? Um, and that, and so when you have a conveyance to someone's heirs, you need to be on the lookout for a more complicated conveyance than just, you know, oh, this is clearly uh, a fee simple to their kids or, oh, this conveyance fails because they don't have kids. That's not what that language means, okay? All right, so next, and for our latecomers, um, today I'm going through some common errors on the estates tutorial because there's a lot of them and they're problems. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing today. Um, so, the next thing is, and I will be honest with you guys, every time I encounter this, this particular mistake, um, I, I, uh, I get a little mad because this is a mistake and you'll understand when I explain it. Um, this is a mistake that creates a lot more work for me while at the same time representing a lot more work for you. So I've given you guys a way to answer these questions that is very simple for you to, to answer, right? Does not require a significant amount of work from you and is very easy for me to grade. And when you don't follow this, I have to sit here and, and sort of wade through a lot of superfluous text. And that is how to um, format these answers on these exercises, okay? And I told, I, I told you guys on several occasions, right? You're going to format them like this. So you start by saying this is a possessory interest to the holder of the possessory interest. And then you say there's a future interest to the holder that vests into a possessory interest. And if there are conditions, then you identify the conditions. Okay. Um, I don't need to know what rights a life estate holder has, you don't get any points for telling me what rights a life estate holder has. I just need to know that they hold a life estate, that you can identify that it's a life estate. And then I need you to identify what future interest is attached to that life estate and who holds it and what possessory interest they get when it vests. Like I don't, I don't need all that extra. You're wasting your time and you're wasting mine. So let's let's be a, a little more, let's be more concise. Um, but this brings me to the next 
issue. This is number four on my list of 12, in case you were wondering, um, is that future interests are uncertain on two fronts. And this is not talking about the doctrine of uncertainty. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But future interests have two things about them that um, are contingent, okay? I think that's a better term, are contingent. The first one is that they may not come into existence, okay? The second is that they may not vest. So let me explain sort of how the timeline works. And I'm gonna put this in the chat for you guys because I put it in the chat in the 10 o'clock hour and that seemed to help them. So we have a possessory interest and it creates a future interest. And when that future, future interest vests, it creates a possessory interest. And that continues the cycle, okay? So when the possessory interest cr creates the future interest, right, both of them exist. When the future interest vests, the old possessory interest dies, okay? So at any given point in time, one possessory interest, one future interest, okay? If you say to me that Agnes has a fee simple determinable and Bob has a, has a, a fee simple absolute, no, because that is two possessory interests at one time. There can only be one possessory interest, one future interest, which means, which means if your conveyance lists multiple future interests, they have to be sequential, which means that one or more of them will have conditions attached. They won't come into existence until some other future interest vests creating them, okay? So this brings us to the next thing because if there's only one possessory interest and one future interest, what are those things? So here's the list of possessory interests. There are five of them, five possessory interests the fee simple absolute, the life estate, okay? And then there are the two fees defeasible, okay? There are two types of defeasible fees. Sometimes these are called fee simple subject to executory limitation. First is the fee simple determinable, which requires an event to occur to defeat it. And second is the fee simple subject to condition subsequent. There you can see four fingers. Um, fee simple subject to condition subsequent, which requires a condition to cease to be true. And then the last type of possessory interest is the fee tail. We're gonna talk about how you create a fee tail in a minute, okay? All right. The list of future interests the reversion, the remainder, the possibility of reverter, and the right of re-entry. Okay, so we have five possessory interests, four future interests. What's the relationship between these two lists? The first thing you have to remember is that the possessory interests define the future interests that they create. So if you say to me, Albert has a life estate and Bob has a possibility of reverter. No, no, because the life estate defines the future interest and the possibility 
the possibility of reverter is not one of the future interests that can be created by a life estate. This means that you have to read the conveyance in order and you have to give everything meaning, okay? Every piece of the conveyance has meaning. There are specific circumstances where we throw away some piece of the conveyance, right? We talked about that in tutorial, Shelley's case, restraints on marriage, restraints on faith, right? But those are rare, okay? In general, if you think that a piece of a conveyance is void, you probably are reading it incorrectly, okay? So the first thing you have to do is if the possessory interest is the fee simple absolute or the fee tail, no future interest is created whatsoever, none. Next. If the possessory interest is a life estate, the future interest that it creates is either the reversion or the remainder. And the reversion is a future interest that goes back to the original grantor. The remainder is when it goes to a third party. The life estate cannot be inherited, okay? So the, the heirs to any life estate holder just don't matter. They don't matter, okay? If the possessory interest is the fee simple determinable, the future interest that is created must, must be a possibility of reverter. Must be a possibility of reverter. So if you say to me that uh, Alan has a fee simple determinable, and then you say to me that Benjamin has a reversion, no, no. Benjamin has a possibility of reverter, okay? If the possessory interest is a fee simple subject to condition subsequent, the future interest it creates must must be the right of re-entry, okay? Must be the right of re-entry. Next, and in case you were wondering, we are on um, number eight on my list of 12. Fee tails are disfavored as conveyances, okay? A lot of places have abolished them, not all, right? Um, Belize being, uh, a major one, um, but not, but a lot of places have abolished the fee tail. Even where it is not abolished, it is disfavored. And so we require precise language in order to uh, determine that a fee tail has been created. Okay, so there are three pieces of three languages that if you see them in a conveyance, they are signals of a fee tail, okay? The first one is 2A and the heirs of his body. 2A and the heirs of his body. The second one is 2A and his heirs begotten of a spouse's name, okay? 2A and his heirs begotten of Betty or Barbara or Benoni. Um, this specific conveyance has the effect of um, preventing inheritance by children from prior or subsequent marriage. And the last uh, language that signals a fee tail is, of course, simply saying 2A in fee tail, right? Simple, easy. Next, awful lot of students 
said to me in their in their responses that 2A for life created a fee simple absolute. When you say that, you basically wipe out the phrase for life. Okay. Um, now, there are places in the Caribbean where 2A is read to convey a life estate. Um, but, uh, um, for the most part, 2A means fee simple absolute, okay? But under no circumstances, nowhere that I know of, nowhere that I have read, does 2A for life equal fee simple absolute? Like that, that doesn't work, okay? All right, almost done. Next, a lot of students missed the shadow grant. And boy, this sounds, every time I say this, it, it sounds nefarious. This is my term, you're not gonna find this in any of the texts. The shadow grant is the future interest retained by the original grantor if they fail to grant the simple absolute, okay? So if the grantor fails to get rid of everything on the property, at some point, there is a, a shadow grant back to the original grantor. Let me tell you how you find it, okay? If there is a sequence of events where nobody named in the conveyance has fee simple absolute, then there must be some sort of shadow grant at the end uh, in fee simple absolute held by the original grantor. Okay? That future interest may not vest, it may never even come into existence, but you have to acknowledge the possibility of it in your description of the interests, okay? Next, uh, and this is the next to last thing. Several students have suggested that some of the conditional conveyances in the assignment are void for uncertainty. This misunderstands the uncertainty cases, okay? The uncertainty doctrine requires us to ask, how do we know whether this condition has been met? Okay, how do we know whether this condition has been met? And the reason for that is if we can't answer the question of whether the condition has been met, we don't know if the possessory interest still exists. We don't know if the fee has been defeated, okay? So um, this came up in tutorial a couple of times when we were going over conveyances. Um, I don't remember if it came up in this tutorial, um, but the example that, that I gave for what an uncertain condition would look like is 2A so long as they're a good person, okay? How do we know if they're a good person? We can't, that's impossible. So we don't, so that's an uncertain condition. The case that, you know, the, the students who, who have mentioned this doctrine have cited a case. And, and I really respect that. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want you to think that I don't uh, appreciate that effort. Um, but in that case, if I'm gonna be very honest, I am basically uh, absolutely convinced that the House of Lords made a complete coat hanger of that case, just an absolute cheesecake, okay? 
because the conveyance in that case was to a uh, so long as they marry a man of Jewish parentage or and of the Jewish faith. Okay. And the House of Lords says, well, look, you know, how do we know if he has Jewish parentage? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean one parent? Does that mean two parents? And the answer is, why don't you ask some Jews? Because I bet they know. I bet that's a term that has meaning in their community. And that's right. That's true. It does. Jews know. So th this is sort of like I really respect the effort and the and the research to find the case and to to cite it, but the case is really anti-Semitic and uh, also basically gets the doctrine wrong. Um, so you know, I I, uh, I want to make sure that we understand that uh, the issue of uncertainty comes from the question being unanswerable and not um, the judge being unwilling to answer the question or the answer being not yet, right? Because both of those are not uncertainties. Um, who boy, uh, give me one second to look it up. Um, hang on, my, my keyboard's over here, so let me, um, keyboard on my desktop's over here, so let me step over here and, and take a look. I, Michelle, I can't, I can't find the case uh, right now, but what I will do is I will um, add it to, because at the end of this, at the end of this week, I'm going to be uploading this common errors document um, so that you guys have it, um, and I will make sure that the name of the case goes in there, okay, um, but, uh, but yeah, I will, I will get that. I will add that to your resources um, by the end of the week, okay? Um, all right, so that is what uncertainty is and is not. And then um, the last thing that I want to uh, communicate to you is awful lot of students um, have said that uh, land, at, you know, at the end of a conveyance, land goes back to the crown or goes back to the state. Okay, so this is a doctrine known as a sheet. Okay, so a sheet, um, and this is not a decedent estates class, so I'm not super familiar with how this works in the Caribbean, but. In the things that, in the places that I'm familiar with, a sheet is all but impossible. Um, not going to say impossible because there's always room for for things to go haywire, but a sheet only happens when there's nobody who can inherit. And I think that this may be part of the confusion um, between children and heirs. Right. So just because you don't have children doesn't mean you don't have heirs. Right. You might have a situation where you're going to leave all of your property to a charity, in which case the charity would be your heirs or you're going to leave it to um, your parent and then your parent is your heir. Um, probably takes subject to a trust, but that's a whole different issue. Um, so I think that you know the the assumption that a sheet is out there um, 
is something that you shouldn't really worry about, right? A sheet is incredibly rare. You should be asking who can take this property that isn't the state or the crown, okay? Because I don't, I don't think that, I, I think if you see one case in your entire career where uh, the property winds up as sheeting to the state, uh, that would be pretty impressive. Uh, that would be a lot. Um, okay, that's all I've got. As I said uh, a minute ago, I am going to take these common errors and once I'm finished grading, upload them to e-learning so that you guys can have them um, for your review and, and for studying. After that point, I'm also going to add a new assignment to e-learning where you're going to have the opportunity to resubmit your answers on this. Um, Cause things are kind of disastrous on them right now. And it's not really that big a deal because one assignment is not going to make or break you one way or the other. Um, but I really do, I, I think that you guys deserve a, another chance to try and incorporate some of these things into your uh, into your answers. Um, so, okay. Uh, what questions do you guys have? Go ahead, Kira. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so my question is, um, and I don't know if I understood you correctly, but did you say that? Um, if the estate, if the conveyance doesn't end in fee simple absolute, then, um, wait, what do you say? If, if it doesn't end in fee simple absolute, then there's like the possibility of reverter to the original grant. Is something not, like, something not like that. Necessarily, not necessarily a possibility of reverter. Okay. But somewhere out there at the end of the of the conveyance there is a future interest back to the original grantor but possibility of reverter is a specific type of future interest that only exists when attached to a fee simple determinable okay does that answer your question um I don't, I don't know. So, okay, okay. So if the conveyance ends in fee simple absolute, then it stops there? Right. The, the, there, if you can devise some set of conditions whereby nobody who's named has fee simple absolute, then there has to be something back to the original grantor at the end. Um, okay, Mandel, I see your, your message. So, um, and I will email you after we're done here. Okay, so, um, Joshua, go ahead. Wait, you can say that again, because it will kind of drop in the road. Uh, it was directed at someone particular. No, your 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 and your response oh. to me. Sorry. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Sorry, sorry. Um, okay. So, if you work through the conveyance, and there is a set of events that, if they all happen, nobody takes fee simple absolute. Mm -hmm. Then there has to be a future interest attached to the end that belongs to the original grantor. Okay. Because, because, because there has to be a disposition of the property forever, for all time going forward, which means at some point, it has to go back to somebody in fee simple absolute. And if it's not contained in the conveyance, it has to go back to the original grantor. And 
And I think this may also be part of the puzzle as to why folks really liked to say that things went back to the state because they, they forgot that it goes back to the original grantor. Mm, okay. Okay. Does, does this does this help now? Would you yeah. tell me if it didn't? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think that cleared it up. Okay. All right, Joshua. What's up? You've okay. So and I appreciate it. Okay. So I have a question. You said that ears don't exist until somebody dies, right? right. And I remember in one of the questions, um, I think somebody had a had a, a fee simple or a life estate and it was supposed to go <clears throat> to bob i think his children it's supposed to go to his children right but he didn't have no children but he was alive in that case right where she's still alive and he doesn't have children and he's alive right i really think my answer was along the lines of well, it was supposed to be along the lines of she has a life estate or fee simple estate, whichever one the question stated. And then I put that since they don't have any children, the um there's no interest created. But then if they were to have children, it would be like a um like a fee a, a fee tail estate or something along those lines. Yeah, so so this is one of those things that hap that that happens sometimes where um, conveyances are made to um, people or classes of people who don't exist yet but might, and this is one of those things where there's a condition attached to the future interest, okay? And um, so I think that, that you're doing the right thing in like acknowledging that there's this condition out there. Um, what I'm concerned about and what, and I don't, to be perfectly frank, Joshua, I don't recall if I've graded your exam, your, your assignment in particular, but what you're describing sounds like a couple of things that I've seen. <laughs> so like I don't like I don't mean to give you a hard time, but like it's very possible that you're one of the people who who uh, who I'm talking about, right? Um, what you uh, what you have to do in that circumstance is you still have to say, hey, there's this future interest in you know, so-and-so's children, um, but it's conditional on them existing. And if they don't exist, then this is what happens. So does that, does that clear that up now? Okay, so if I'm understanding it right, so I have to make sure I stress the fact that it's conditional that they exist. And yep in the possibility that they don't exist, it reverts like back to the hands of the government or something like that. Well, you, you, it, I, I can promise you it does not revert back to the government, um, but, but yes, you, you do have to identify what happens um, if, they, if they do not come into existence um, before, the, uh, before the future interest vests. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so, so remember, right? One, one thing to keep in mind is that um, the, uh, when a, a life estate is created, the, the remainder will vest, okay? And so if there's a condition attached to the remainder and the life estate holder dies before that condition is met, then there has to be a some sort of contingency remainder because the remainder didn't the, the remainder can't vest in no one. Okay. So mm -hmm. Joshua, does that do you feel like that that helps? Does that give you a better grip on on what's going on there? Well well yeah. But okay. 
let's say, right, there isn't any um contingency remainder. Like, let's say, like, the question doesn't state it, right? Then, then, what, it, it, what, then it would be a shadow grant. It would, it would be a... Oh. Yeah. So if, that's what you were talking about. Right. If you're, if you're looking for a contingent remainder and you don't see it, that must mean that it exists with the original grantor. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I understand it now. Great. Awesome. So, Chanel, you, you said you had a question. Yes. Um, so you said to the, one of the questions, uh, so it was very open-ended, and you were like, from to Amy for life and then to Bran, would that be um, a situation where there is, he would have it in fee simple absolute then, because it, yes. there's no way yes. they can apply to anybody else. Right. If there's 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 no condition, there's no condition. There's no there's no event. It's just to run. So right. there 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 you have it. Right. right. That's that goes to them. So, in simple. so another question I have right is that so basically what you're saying is when we. We have to add in things like words like remainder, reverter, um, into our answers because what you're saying to me is basically I, I I'm still kind of trying to understand um, what you mean by um, like you know when you when you say things like um, remain uh, reverter or or anything like that especially because I have it in my in my work but because I just I genuinely do not understand what you are asking when you say things like when you try to say holder to for future interest to holder in possession in possessory in possessory interest conditional on if like things like that like right. what so so what i've done is i've given you guys a form right and that form has placeholders for it to go into and so what you have to do is you you plug in the right term that goes into those placeholders. So you start with the present interest, right? Which is one of the possessory interests. I gave you the list of possessory interests. Right, right. Okay, and, and it goes to somebody, so it goes to the holder. And if that possessory interest creates a future interest, then the next line is the future interest to the holder in the possessory interest that is created when that future interest vests. Because remember, I told you, one possessory interest, one future interest at any time, at any given time. Right. Okay. okay. And so when the future interest vests, the possessory interest goes away, the future interest becomes possessory, and it creates a new future interest. Yeah, okay. So does that make sense now? Yeah, I understand. Okay, great. Michelle, your hand is up. I appreciate your patience. Go ahead. Right, sir. So to add to or to try to figure out from what Joshua was asking, where Kathy has no children, but the the conveyance is to Kathy, right, to Betty for life and then to Kathy's children and their heirs. So we are saying that it becomes a reversionary interest um, in favor of the original grantor in fee simple absolute. Is that correct to say that? That's that's the contingent. Piece, right is okay if if uh um betty dies before kathy has kids mm -hmm. or kathy predece predeceases betty uh and and has no kids then um the original grantors uh uh remainder steps in okay so another question so if by chance the original grantor had to be deceased, um, so therefore it can't go back to them, but it then go to their heirs? That is correct. Because, because it's always a fee simple, the, the shadow grant is always in fee simple absolute, so it's inheritable. So if the original grantor has deceased, their heirs step into their shoes. Good, just checking. Okay. All right, sir, got you. Thanks, Tanaj, go ahead. 
Okay, so piggybacking off of what Michelle said, so you would say the remainder is in the original Granger's hairs? That's what you would actually put? I'm sorry? You were, she was talking about the fact that um, the simple were to the original Granter. And if the original was deceased, you said it would go to his or her hairs. So I'm just trying to figure out if, if that's what you would actually a reversionary interest in the original no. grantor. Yeah. So, so this would be a this would be a reversion uh, to the original grantor in fee simple absolute, conditional on the conditions that that apply. Right. So, shadow grants are always going to be conditional because they're always going to rely on um, the failure of other uh, of other grants. So does that answer your question? Yes, but then I'm still unsure of what you would write. So you would write conditional on. Yep. Da -da -da -da. Yep, conditional on whatever conditions you identified in the conveyance. Okay. It's okay. basically what's the story? Basically, conditional, what comes after conditional on is what's the story? that makes this future interest come into existence. Okay, so what, what's, what's the story, um, what's the series of events, right, um, that gets us to the point where the original grantor may end up with the property again? So does that, does that answer your question? Does that, help? Yes, it does. Thank you. Good. Okay. Bonnie, go ahead. Hi. I wanted to know uh, when it comes to the ears and the children and then to the ears, that is the part that's a little bit puzzling to me. Uh, so that conveyance refers to the children's heirs. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just to the person and then to the ears. Yep. The, the, the difference is there, um, so there's no, nothing of note between the children and the ears um, to of technicality to look at. I was a little bit confused on that. So it's just simply to the children and then to the ears. Yeah, well, the, the heirs don't, um, there's no, there's no conveyance to the heirs. The, the heirs in this situation are just attachments. They're, they're just signals of fee simple absolute. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? What other questions are there? Going once, going twice. Okay, I will uh, see you guys a little bit later. Um, uh, tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Mundell, I'm gonna email you right away uh, and, and uh, make sure that we're on the same page on that. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care, bye. Oh, go ahead, Bonnie. Before. I apologize for being late, but we were in another class up until 17 after the hour. So I'm sorry. And no, then I had no to wait at all. I, oh, sure. Life happens and these things happen. So, but thanks for letting me know. So, all right. I'll talk to you guys later and uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs>